Now we are into sums and differences in area and volume. The first question I want to treat says that a certain table top has radius of one meter and an inner portion of radius 75 centimeters. That means that table must be a round table if you are talking of it having a radius. So let's assume that this is the top of the table. Table top, something like this. You find round table tops most in dining tables. So the table top is designed in such a way that there is an inner portion made of glass while the outer portion is made of wood according to the question. The question says the inner portion is made of glass while the outer portion is made of wood. Now it says that the radius is one meter. That means let's assume that this is the center of the table. From here to here is one meter. And the inner portion has a radius of the inner portion is something like from here to here. The portion that is made of glass is 75 cm. So this is the illustration of the top of the table. So the question went on and said if glass costs 2005 per meter squared and wood costs 1005 per meter squared, now we should calculate the cost of the top of the table top. Now if you look very close to this, you discover that everything about the equation is a meter squared apart from the radius of the inner table. First of all, change this centimeter squared, sorry, these centimeters to meters before you start multiplying. Students used to make the mistake. They will keep, they will just multiply out, not minding that this is in centimeters, why this is in meters. They multiply out. At the end of the day, they will try to either leave the answer like that or try to change centimeters or meters. After they have multiplied, the answer must be wrong. Before you multiply, let all the units you are multiplying be in the same unit. If you want, change the meters to centimeters and multiply. After we change it back to meters, or change the centimeters to meters and multiply and leave the answer there because the answers are required in meter squared. Okay. Now, we are going to calculate the area of the glass different and the area of the wood different after which we add them together. When we calculate the area of the glass, whatever we get, we find it equivalent in Naira because if one square meter of glass will cost 2005, whatever we get as, this, as the area of the glass of the table by proportion, we find its equivalent in Naira. Keep it. Do the same thing for the wood, keep it. Now the cost of the top of the table now will be whatever equivalent in Naira we got for glass plus the equivalence we got for wood added together. That will be the cost of the top of the table. So let's calculate the area of the glass, the inner one. The area of the glass is the area of a circle is given by pi r squared. And it's going to give us 22 all over 7 times R, the radius of the glass, which is the inner. 75 centimeters, remember that 100 centimeters is 1 meter. So if you want to change 75 centimeters to meter, you divide this 75 by 100. And when you do so, you have 0 0.75 meters. Now, this is going to be squared, then all over 1. Whatever we get after multiplying out this is the area of the glass, giving us 12.375 
Then when you divide it by seven, whatever it gives you is the area of that glass. You're giving me one point seven six seven nine in four decimal places. Remember, it's going to be meter squared. So leave this here. Let's calculate the area of the wood. The area of the wood will come from pi arrow squared minus pi arrow squared. Pi arrow squared for the radius of the entire circle minus pi arrow squared for the area of the inner circle. So it's going to have 22 all over 7 for pi times the first radius is 1 meter. So we have 1 squared all over 1. Then minus the pi for the second one is he said 22 all over 7 times 0.75 which is the radius of the inner circle made of glass. So we have 0 0.75 squared all over 1. Now let's multiply out. You're giving us the value of pi. 3.1429. I have rounded this out to four decimal places. Then minus you're giving us 1.76 seven nine also in four decimal places so let's subtract now giving us 1.375 meter squared so now this is the area of the wood while this is the area of the glass now let's by proportion, they say that one meter squared of glass costs 2,005. So if one meter squared of glass is 2,500, that means 1.7679 meter squared will be, multiply this by the cost of 1 meter squared, 1.7679 times 2,500. Let's multiply out. It's giving us 4,419 Naira 75 cobble. That is for glass. For wood, they said that one meter squared is 1,005. So one meter squared of wood costs 1,500 Naira. Therefore, 1.375 meter squared is going to be Multiply this by the cost of one meter squared. It's going to give you 1.375 times 1,500. Let's multiply out and get that value. We're giving us 2,662 naira 5 cover. Now, the total cost of the top of the table is going to be the cost of the glass portion plus the cost of the wooden portion, which is 4,419 Naira 75 Kobo plus 2,062 Naira 5 Kobo. If you add this to this, whatever it gives you is the cost of the entire top of the table. It's giving us 6 naira or 6,482 naira 25 cobble. 
So this is the cost of the entire top of the table, which the question has asked us to calculate. This is question number two on our sums and differences in area and volume. The question says that the diagram below, this diagram, is that of an untreaded boat in a boat manufacturing company. Okay, you know what boat is? What they use in tightening things. The longer side before the knot. Okay? The question went ahead and said, with the information on it, with all this information you see on it, calculate the mass in kilogram of 100 pieces of the boat if the density of the metal of which the boat is made of is 7.83 grams per cm cube. Now, this is the boat. If you look at this boat now, it's made up, made up of two sets of cylindrical shaped figures. From here to here is one cylinder. And then this one is another cylinder. Density in mathematics and in science is calculated from this formula. Mass divided by volume. For density is called mass per unit volume. If you know the mass of a certain thing and know its volume, if you divide the mass by the volume, whatever it gives you is the density. Now, the question is asking for the mass. It says, calculate the mass in kilograms. So let's first of all, Density divided by 1 is mass all over volume. If you cross multiply, discover that mass is going to be the product of density and volume. Density times volume. Now, we are going to calculate the volume of the boat, which we are going to get from the volume of the two cylindrical portions added together. Then when we multiply it with the density that has been given to us, we get the mass. Very simple. Okay. Volume. The volume of the boat will be given by the volume of the first cylinder plus the volume of the second cylinder. And the formula for the volume of any cylinder is given by pi r squared h. So we're going to have pi r squared h for this cylinder and pi r squared h for this other cylinder. I omitted something. This cylinder has this side measuring 2 cm. Sorry, I omitted it. It's part of the information. Okay, so pi r squared h plus pi r squared h We give us the volume of this cylinder and this cylinder. Let's take this as the first one. So in this case, we're going to have 22 all over 7 times the radius. If you take the radius from here, that means this will be the height. If you take the radius from here, that means this, but this is the radius. Take the radius from here because this side that is circular in form. If the diameter, the distance from here to here is 2, that means the radius is 1 cm. So let's take 1 squared all over 1, then times the height now is also 1 cm. 1 all over 1. Then plus 22 all over 7 for the second cylinder times. This side is the side that is circular in form. If the diameter is 1, that means the radius is 0 0.5. So we have 0 0.5 squared all over 1 times the height. The height is this from here to here, which is 4 centimeters. So we have 4 all over 1. By the time we multiply out and add what we multiply out from this side, we get the volume of the whole box. Let's go ahead and do it. 
1 squared is 1 times 1 is 1 times 22 will give you 22 all over 7. Plus half times half will give you 1 over 4. Yes, 0 0.25. Then times 4. It's giving me 1. Times 22 will also give me 22 all over 7. These are the values of pi. So in both cases we have pi plus pi. Let's go. We can find this by simple arithmetic. Find the sum of this and this. 7 divided 7 is 1 plus 22. Sorry, times 22 will give you 22. Plus 7 divided by 7 is 1 times 22 will give you 22. So this is giving us 22 plus 22 is 44 divided by 7. And 44 divided by 7 will give us 6.2857 in four decimal places. That is the volume. It's going to be in cm cube. Now that you have calculated the volume, if you multiply it to the density given, it will give you the mass of one of the books. So let's take mass is equal to density times volume. Density was given in equation to be 7.83 grams per cm cube. So 7.83 times the volume we calculated now, which is 6. We have 7.83 times 6.2857 is giving us 49.8. Two one seven in three decimal places. So this is the mass. This is going to be grams. This is the mass of one of the boats. So if this is mass of one of the boats, remember the equation says we should calculate in kilograms the mass of hundred pieces. If the mass of one of the boats is forty-seven. Sorry, 49.217 grams. That means mass for 100. For 100 pieces. It's going to be 49.217 times 100. This will give us for one, just move these decimal places through two digits. You now have 4921.7 grams. Okay? We have not finished. The next thing we are going to do, this is the mass of 100 pieces of that boat. But the questionnaire said we should give the answer in kilograms. You know that 1,000 grams is equal to 1 kilogram. Therefore, 4921.9 grams is going to be, just divide this by 1,000. Move the decimal place through the left across three digits. So you are going to have 4.9 219 kilograms. So this is the mass of 100 pieces of that boat in the company that is untraded in kilograms. And I showed this diagram. I showed a tent made of a tarpaulin. 
that the shape is like that of a code placed on one end of a cylinder. You can see from here to here is a cone, and from there to this side is a cylinder. So the shape of this tank is like a cone placed on top of the cylinder. It went ahead and said that if the height of the tank and the radius of the cylinder are 6 meters each, while the height of the cylinder is 3.5 meters, all this information are found inside. We are interested in what they want us to find. They always tell us to find something. They will keep losing things and tell us to keep finding it. No problem. And they say we should find the volume of the tent, the volume of the entire tent, B, the area of the ground covered by the tent, the area of the ground covered by the tent, C, the area of the tarpaulin used in making the tent. Without wasting much time, let's go to question number A. In question number A, they say we should find the volume of the tent. The volume of this tent is the volume of the cone plus the volume of the cylinder. Volume of cone is calculated from this formula. 1 over 3 pi r squared h. 1 over 3 pi r squared h. 1 over 3 pi r squared h. This is the formula for finding the volume of any cone. It's one of the formulae you must memorize. Now, if you add it to the volume of the cylinder, which you already know, that is calculated by pi r squared h. Whatever it gives you is the volume of the entire tent. So let's go into substitution now. From the information given on the diagram of the tent, we are going to derive our R and our H. Pi are standard values. So we have render 1 over 3 times pi is 22 over 7. Bring it down times R. Remember, this part is talking of the cone. The radius of the cone has been given here, 6 meters. Even the question has that the height of the tent and the radius of the cylinder are 6 meters each. The radius of the cylinder is the same thing as the radius of the cone, because the cone is on top of the cylinder, and they measure the same thing. So our R is 6, so we have 6 squared, all over 1, times the height of this cone is already given, 2.5 meters. So we have 2.5 all over 1. This volume of the cone, if you add it to the volume of the cylinder from pi, which is 22 all over 7, times R, the radius of the cylinder is the same thing with the radius of the cone. 6 squared all over 1. Then times the height. Remember, the question says that the, the tent has a height of 6 meters. If the height of the cone is 2.5, if you remove 2.5 from 6 meters, you get 3.5. That was why. They wrote 3.5 meters here. So we have 3.5 as the height of the cylinder. By the time you do this multiplying out, whatever you have is the volume of the tent, which question number A has asked for. So let's go into multiplying. Start from 6 squared. 6 squared is 36. 36 times 2.5. 2.5 times 22. It's giving me 1 
I have to continue here. Okay, let's see a space here. 190, 1980. All over 3 times 7 is 21. Then plus, let's multiply out this. 6 squared is 36. So you have 36 times 3.5 times 22. It's giving us. 2772 divided by, in this case, only 7. So let's transfer this to a decimal and transfer this to a decimal so I can add them together. Transferring it to a decimal means 1980 divided by 21. This one is giving us. So this is going to be what I'm just managing our space. 94.2857 in four decimal places. Now plus, let's also transfer this to decimal. 2772 divided by 7. 396. 396. So if we add this and this, it's going to give us 396 plus 94.2857. It's giving us 490.2857 meter cube. Remember, we are talking of volume. So that is the volume of the tent, which we calculated from the volume of the cone plus the volume of the cylinder. Now, let's go to the B part of the question. The B part of the question says we should find the area of ground covered by the tent. The area of the ground covered by the tent is the base of the cylinder. So the area of the circle of the base of this cylinder is the area of ground covered by the tent. We are going to get that area from area of a circle, which is calculated from pi r squared. So the pi r squared now is going to be 22 all over 7, which is pi times r. r is the radius of this cylinder which is giving us 6 squared so we're going to have 22 times 36 6 squared is 36 divided by 7 whatever we have here is the area of ground that the tent has covered 22 times 36 is giving us 792 divided by 7. We have 113.1429 meter squared. We're talking of area. So this is the area of the tent that covers the ground. Now the last question is question number C. Before we could do question number C, we have to clean off Question number A and B, because question number C is very, very broad. Now, let's tackle question number C, as I have cleaned off question number A and B to have a space for it. Question number C said I will find the area of the tarpaulin used in making the tent. The area of the tarpaulin used in making the tent is the area of the cone plus the area of the cylinder. It's a very small, simple thing. But some authors we call the area of this cone the curved surface area. Likewise, the area of the cylinder, they call it curved surface area. Now, the curved surface area of the cone is calculated from pi r l. Pi r l, not pi r squared. H, 
pi r l. That l is the slant height, not the perpendicular height. So we have pi r l plus also the formula for finding the curved surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r h. 2 pi r h. So plus 2 pi r h. If you add this to this, it will give you the area of the tarpaulin used in making the entire thing. Okay. Pi remains 22 all over 7 times R, the radius of the circle of the cone, which is 6 meters. To so have 6 all over 1 times L, the slant height. The slant height. That is where the job is now. All over 1. We are going to find the value of this slant height using our Pythagoras theorem. But let it remain here for now. Plus 2, 2 all over 1, plus pi, 22 all over 7, plus r, the radius of the cylinder, which is the same thing as the radius of the base of the cone, which is 6 all over 1, plus h, the height of the cylinder, which is 3.5. So we have 3.5 all over 1. Now, before we can continue with this, we must find the value of L. And the value of L, if you look at this cone, this cone is already divided into two equal right angled triangles. In a case that the slant height, which the equation is asking for, is the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle. And in Pythagoras theory, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the square, the sum of the square of the other two sides. That means we have that L squared, the hypotenuse squared, is equal to, from this diagram, this side is measuring. 2.5. So 2.5 squared plus this side is 6. 6 squared. So whatever you get by multiplying out this is the value of L squared. Then this E square root will not give you the value of L. So let's just multiply out 2.5 times 2.5. It's giving us 6.25. Then plus 36, 6 squared is 36. So add two of them together, plus 36. What you have here is 42.25. If L squared is 42.25, if you take the square root of both sides, the square root of L squared is L. Then the square root of 42.25. You can find in your calculator. Whatever it gives you is the value of L. It will be 6.5. 6.5 meters. Remember, we are talking of just a side. So we are going to use 6.5 to substitute the value of L so that we can have our our question completed. Now, we, are, we must continue here now. What we now have here now is, let's go straight and multiply because we don't have enough space. 22 times 6 times 6.5, which is L. Let's know what the value is. It's giving us 858. Then divided by 7 times 1 times 1, which is 7. If you add it to 2 times 22, which is 44. 44 times 6. 
then times 3.5 is giving me 924 all over 7 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is 7. So we can now find the value of this plus this, either by our arithmetic. The sum of this and this is 7. 7 divided 7 is 1 times 858 will give you 858. Plus 7 divided 7 is 1 times 924 will give you 924. So you can now add 858, 858 plus 924, 924, then divided by 7, the grand answer is becoming 254.5714 in four decimal places. Remember, we are talking of area, the area of the tapolin that you use in constructing the entire tent. So this is going to be in meters squared. And that has brought us to the end of that question number three. We have now entered into a subtopic called change of shape. It is still under our further menstruation topic. In this question, we are asked to that a major cylinder of diameter 80 millimeters has water to the depth of 125 millimeter. It's just like telling you that the height of the cylinder is 125 millimeter because wherever the water stops will be the height that you want to take. For instance, if you are asked later to calculate the volume, these are the tricks of examiners. Don't mind them. The question went ahead and says that this water was turned into a cylindrical baker of diameter 100 millimeter. Then that we should calculate the depth of the water in the baker. That's question number A. Question number B is we should calculate the radius of the burette tube if the water is poured now into a burette tube and the height of water there is 360 millimeters. Question number A. A measuring from a measuring cylinder of diameter 80 meters that has water to the depth of 125. This water was turned into another cylindrical baker of diameter 100 millimeter. That means the volume of the first cylinder will be equal to the volume of the second cylinder. It's just that. It's from there that you're going to calculate this depth of water in the new baker. That will give us that pi r squared h, which is the volume of the first cylinder, is equal to another pi r squared h, which is the volume.